This content is not a substitute for the market material. Please go support the official release. All rights belong to Netflix and their affiliates. Things being shoved into it and bad on his head. compact. But it's actually kind of well paced. I like how many slow moves there are. Ah, so this is the part that you should come visit me on the D and D missions. Oi! Oi! Stop! Fuck off! I'm oh, come on! I think I just found my favorite character. <laughs> Suckers! Free food! <laughs> I don't care how our place is. Oh wow! A oh, job I've got for you. I beg you. Oh! So there is the devil. Other... He's been stealing all our grain. So this is the other side. How one side can be in totally fear of him that leads to uh, anger and violence. I've got two. This what side actually wants to be vent. No actually, I won't see some merit with it. Backup. I'll be still scared. Blaviken. Oh. Come here. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Come on, Roach. Fringilla. Rose a cat on accident. Hmm. Sabrina. They're vicious things. Turned her mother fat. But and and Zelda and now Helga were too happy. Just because conduits of chaos. Say no. Hmm? I'm doing it. Your hand. <laughs> This is the balance. Demonstrated Life beautifully. Energy. Thank you, Frangilla. There is no conjuring something from nothing. There is a give and a take. Used. Zaylil A. Absorb take from the nature and give to yourself. Yennefer. So this is Yennefer. The sorceress. Gerald's true soulmate. In the mountain. There I go again, just delivering exposition. Tell you she's aware Geralt. about it. Geralt. It doesn't let us a, a stream of names. Geralt, really don't leave it. me. Oh, that hurts my head. Leave me be! Oh! Not a mask. A fog? Talk. Chaos. Catch lightning in a bottle. That's impossible. I got that, dog. Lightning in a bottle. Blip. All it does is this. Jesus. Seems like the more potent. She's still breathing. Chaos magic. Not moved her Alice aside. The more powerful the effort is. Annika, your turn. I did it. Look at her. Oh! Your turn. Do it to do it to spite her. Yeah, I'll do it. Ha! Oh, thought she had it. Sabrina, show these guys. This is the part where we escape. This is the part where they kill us. This is the part where he kills us. Hello! This is the part where I kill you! Who's they? <laughs> Let us. Elves. Oh, that's my loot. Give that back. Quick, uh, Geralt, do your, your witchering. Shut up! No. This oh, oh, my other speech is rough. I only got part of that. Humans. Shut up. Ah, it's Magempe, Mizol Grasha. <laughs> Do you want to die right now? As yes, opposed to later. No, please, not the loop! Leave off! He's just a bard. <laughs> you don't deserve the air you breathe. Everything you touch, you destroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
You hide in your golden palaces. You beat a bound man too scared to even look him in the eye! Do you like my palace? Hmm? Does it live up to the tales you humans tell? <laughs> yeah, take that, pointy. <laughs> Forced out. No, they chose. Do you know anyone that would choose to leave their home? Yes. The staff. Synthetically enhanced so humans can make magic. Chaos is the same as it's always been. Humans just adapt it better. You say adapt, and I say destroy. You are choosing to starve. You're cutting off your ear to spite your face. You think this is about pride? Magic with chaos. My elders worked with humans. Be his fertilizer for their grain. Oof. I don't wish to bury anyone else. It's a harrow. I was once Philovandril of the Silver Towers. You, Witcher. I have learned to live with them. So that I may live. Can you use it to say? Please, my king. There are others. A new generation. A very end who wish to fight. Let us take back what's ours. Starting now. What? Stand aside! The Witcher could have killed me. But he didn't. He's different. Like us. If you must kill me, I am ready. But the Sylvan's right. Don't call me human. Dead elves. Yeah, how can I overlook that? It's a it's a realm of skull and bones. Oh my god. These elves built that Ratuza. You mean the slaves? They're angry. No, no, this was before you. What did they do in the past? Elves are the original sorcerers of the continent. Or were they just simply... You see, when humans banished. and monsters all arrived after the conjunction of the spheres, Elven mages taught the first humans how to turn chaos into magic. Oh. It's kind of similar to the Dragon Prince, actually. Missing the magic from the dead, from the life of others. Fainroid only grows where all the blood is spilled. People, because of their magical prowess, developing their own darker magical prowess. It's very similar. Open your mouth. Maybe that's where Dragon Prince got its ideas from. That's how my father died. His blood is oh. why I'm cursed with a twisted spine. Why am I only worth four marks? So that's why she's discriminated against. Why no one could ever love me? Oh, growing the height of an elf, but growing inside the body of a human. That's horrifying. That's even worse than what I was expecting. Jesus. Her entire story is just, it's just third act destruction. Oh, Jesus, you're going to be like, sacrificed? Come forth, Yennefer. Why aren't they ascending? It's a higher form. You turn my friend into a slug. An eel. 
Come. Don't. She's too Push good. your friend into the pool. No. Yes. Oh, God. I took away her control, but she still has power. She's a conduit. Why? Priorities are. That should, be, that should be my catchphrase. Why? Witcher, oh, valley of plenty. Oh, valley of plenty. Oh. <laughs> Witcher. I heard about this one. Right, now we're getting on track. Uh, when, it come, when it comes to these episodes, I'm not, I'm not on the other level of high fantasy. I'm not really on the level with everyone else is. So, when we come to something like this, I, I tend to do a bit more research to it. And so I wanted to focus this review on, on a, the concept of magic systems. And specifically, in this, in this case, I think this is a really creative use of the magic system. I haven't seen other ones yet, but I think this is a, I wouldn't say innovative, but a good, just a good use of it. Because uh, I refer back to this notion of the magic system because I heard from this other YouTuber named Hello Future Me. He quoted Sanderson's first law of magic as follows, an author's ability to solve conflict with magic is directly proportional to how well the reader slash viewer understands said magic. But to me, it's very possible that the Witcher balances the hard and soft magic systems and especially how they link to those characters and, and, their, and their progress. I take Yennefer, for example. So for Yennefer, an entire life of, of powerlessness. She has, she has no control, her being dominated by others. And when it comes to this, her whole life and survival depends on her understanding of magic. This helps develop the hard magic system specifically how it works. As we saw earlier in the, in the episode, it was a case of, of transferring life energy or transferring energy from another source and using it to your own advantage. Such as you taking flowers, draining the life force from that, and then using it to levitate a rock. The, the, the hard magic rules there is you need to obtain an energy source from somewhere. And if you, if you do not, it absorbs your life force from yourself. So that's a, it's similar, as I may have mentioned in the reaction, to another, another fantasy I like to follow called The Dragon Prince. <coughs> and in, in that series, in that, in that world, the magic system depends for humans, specifically dark magic, on the notion of, you know, sacrificing an entity for your own gain. So, for example, the more powerful the sacrifice, the more powerful the magic spell. For example, portions of dragon, or you might sacrifice an animal, or a, a life of a young one, and you'll be able to revitalize someone who is on the cusp of death or mortally wounded. And that's a similar, it follows a similar premise. Um, but it, it, the thing is, the show also balances the notion of the hard and soft magic system. The magic system that's not explained. Uh, for Gerald, I, from what I've been able to understand, he uses sort of gestures, sort of hand and light movements, and makes a gesture to make symbols, and that creates a sort of uh, powerful, powerful spell. He could create concussive blasts that can you know, affect his enemies. And, but in the same way as the character, he himself is shrouded in mystery. Therefore, when he is determined to revel in his power, he, we're, we're, not, we're not accustomed to how it works specifically. To what are the details? What are the drawbacks? There might be drawbacks, but just like the character himself, it's all a mystery. And 
I mean, and that, and that works to its benefit. The less you know about the magic, the more powerful it comes off as, and the more mysterious it is. I mean, it could be building up a tension of, is there is there some sort of drawback that's severely affecting him, or is he able some, or is he able to su supplement it through the use of potions? Yeah. And back with Yennefer, uh, it's also interesting how the more we, the only way we can empathize with Yennefer is through our understanding of magic. For example, if he, if she's, um, if you understand the set limits, what's needed for them, and what's the restrictions, but also the standard she needs to meet, that standard is what she needs to meet and exceed in order to become noticed. And of course, we have yeah, that more because we're understanding the system and how it plays out. You know, we, we see that the fact that She's developing her power, but she needs to do it at an advanced pace, otherwise she will not be acknowledged. And that's, a, that's a, in many ways, the proper introduction to a magic system. It ties the use of magic to the characters we're going to follow. In the same way we might follow Harry Potter, his, his char the magic is limitless, but the development he needs to do to cast all that power, limitless power is what keeps us engaged. In this case, Yennefer's uh, desire to control the, the power and develop the power and essentially develop a person is, is interlinked. The fact that she what she needs is to get that power, but she needs to get grow as a person. And to grow as a person, she needs to get more power, and so on and so on. And she needs to avoid being, letting herself be fueled by emotion, unless, which is something the Witcher has been able to c cultivate. And I don't see why he's the emotional husk. Emotionless husk. I've been seeing some detractors from this calling him an edge lord or some sort of Gary Stu. You know, he gets everyone, he gets everything he wants, all the riches, all the women, and he always wins the day. In this way, it's actually a, lo a loss to his character because, in a good way, because he actually cannot empathize with others. He can't truly grow as grow emotionally and he in a way he's restricted in his emotions so he has unlimited control of his power that makes him a good diplomat he's not controlled by his emotions but it also limits his ability to connect and that depends on whether he connects with other characters throughout the rest of the series and of course we must, we must forget little Siri now I did feel this episode was a bit muddled as much as I say the pacing is good that we can have these slow moments between characters they can sit down and reminisce and contemplate. I actually started reading the Rit Witcher novels. I've started on the Last Wish though I think that might be a bit out of place order with the actual series. Right from what I could tell that's episode 5. But I did feel it was, it was a bit muddled this episode. I think it's the episodes work when it's balanced between two characters. When it's either the Witcher and Yennefer or Yennefer and Ciri or Witcher and Siri, stuff like that. So we need it needs to be it needs to find a good balance between developing the characters at a specific rate. Um, and as for Siri's journey, I did feel it was a bit boring. You know, it was just her finding a camp and then meeting these characters and then those characters dying. It I was I was anticipating throughout the entire episode. I thought, oh, this woman hates the queen. She hates the royal family. At the end of it, they're going to be at each other's throats. No, it's like she never finds out. She's murdered by the, by the servant or the slave, I assume. I assume. And she and it never really comes back. But in a way, it, it is seen through Ciri's actions. Ciri's journey, I imagine, is going to be one of acknowledgement. The fact that she has to acknowledge what effect her grandmother has had. She has caused these deaths to not only countless other nations, but to her own nation because of, of a brutal desire for domination, for control. To, to be in control of herself and her own destiny. And it's also a case of abandonment. She had to adopt a new name. She has to adopt, so in a way, she's adopting a new destiny, a new identity, a new perspective. All of her, her, all of her, uh, of her 
journey is a case of a building's ruin, a character growth from a young child to a grown woman. And that's, I mean, that's a good sort of blend. We got the, the young female heroine who's, who struggles to overcome the, the hardships of her life to become a powerful warrior slash sorceress. We got the lone, lone sword wielder coming into town who has to overcome the strings and shallows and swings and blows of his past. Similar to Clint Eastwood's character and yeah, for similar to Bride from Kill Bill. And in a similar way, Siri is almost like essentially a an Arya Stark. I hate I hate to make the comparison to Game of Thrones, but she is one of the better sort of characters I like to compare to. But she is her own they are their own thing. At least I hope so. That's what I hope the series to develop into. Yeah, so I, I, I suppose I should also give some thought to Geralt's, to Geralt's ability as a mercenary. The fact that he develops not only a killer instinct, but the fact that he can look at, look at a situation and realise this is not the time for brutal threats or needless violence. It's a case for diplomacy, negotiation, clever thinking. And I think that having having that bar dandelion was still, still one of my favorite one of my favorite characters. I think he's good in small doses, but I think he's hilarious and a nice bit of sort of camaraderie, and but also a bit of humanity. It's a very much a yin and yang scenario. We got Gerald, who's like really stoic, very inhumane, and very serious. But then we have. Have Dandelion, who's very jovi jovial, outgoing, and I'm very weak. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope I hope if you enjoyed it, you might leave a comment to see if I can improve on anything. Uh, leave a like so maybe others can see it. And at the very, and if you're able to, if you want to, if you, you don't have to, a subscriber, if you subscriber to hopefully boost the channel and maybe keep this going. And that's all there is to it.